Hi, now uh, let's look at uh, the different types of loans, which is the application of the annuity. Okay. So uh, there are three different types of loan here. The first one is the pure discount loans. So the pure discount loan is now principal amount is repaid some future date, but no interest payments. So, so such as like this one year debt, you borrow like $700, so you borrow it, and you pay back $1,000, then the $300 difference is basically the the cost for the debt, right? So that's the pure discount loan, but there's no periodic interest. So it's called pure discount. The number two is the interest only loan. Interest only loan now includes two parts. The first part like interest. So suppose you have three year debt, which you should pay $200,000 each year and then $1,000 principal back. So this is only interest and this is the principal. Then it's called interest only loans. Now the third part is amortized loan. Now amortized loan is like suppose you have payment like three year payment like say seven hundred dollars for three years and you pay up everything like car payment like a uh, home mortgages so periodic equal payment including interest and portion of the principal so for amortized loan your payment includes the interest only loans the payment is just interest but amortized loans your payment includes the interest plus some portion of the principal that's called the amortized loan no lump sum payment at the loan like in the end and at the end of the loan periods so this is example of the annuity because you have same amount of money paid for even it's based on same interest rate so a typical example of the amortized loan is the home mortgage like usually a 30 year fixed year mortgage you know you make monthly same payment for 360 times like 30 years and after 30 years you own nothing so your payment includes the interest portion and the principal portion so which type of loan is riskier uh, we'll think about it in class now assume that you took out the hundred thousand dollar mortgage with monthly payment annual interest rate of 7.2 percent what will your monthly payment be so you have mortgage payment now okay and monthly payment actually and you took a hundred thousand dollars so you, you receive hundred thousand dollars right and you start to pay monthly now assume that this is 30 year mortgage, okay? So this is year 30, okay? And your payment and payment actually, so after 30 years payment, then this loan, $100,000 paid off. But now, there's one issue here because our payment is not annual payment so previous problems or annual problems so we don't have to worry about anything now this is monthly problem so we have changed two variables actually just number one what is the interest rate that corresponds to time period between each loan payment so your loan payment is like monthly which means that your interest rate should be monthly Now this 7.2% is annual interest rate, so you you should convert this 7.2 monthly. That's first part. The second part is how many payments will you make? If this is relatively easy because if this is monthly payment, so this is first month, second month, and third year, which is 360 times 360 payment, right? Which is 30 year times number of payment per year. So now your present value is this loan value hundred thousand, right? Now and it's three hundred sixty, which is three years time number of year per I mean number of payment per year, 
future balance is zero because there's no remaining balance. Now we want to get the payment, right? The interest is now interest is 7.2%, but this is month. I mean, annual interest rate you actually have to get monthly, which is 0.6%, I believe. Okay. So when you compute this this one, then you will get the PMT, which is the payment for the mortgage. So let's look at that. The answers are six hundred. So you will get negative six hundred seven eight dollars and seventy nine cents. Okay. So, what does it mean? It means that now this is negative because you pay for it, right? You pay for the this amount. So you receive hundred thousand dollars when you take out the loan, and you pay six hundred seventy-eight dollars and seventy-nine cents each month for three hundred sixty times. You are paid off, and interest rate is now seven point two percent annually and zero point six percent monthly. So this is how to handle the non-annual payment. Again, there are two parts that you have to think about. One, you have to change the interest rate. So you have to change interest rate to periodic rate. If it is monthly payment, this should be monthly rate. This should be semi-annual payment, it should be semi-annual rate. Now the second one is how many payments will you make? So this is not annual compounding problem. Now at this point, we basically deal with the stated rate, like 7.2% is like stated rate. But this stated rate is annualized one. So this is also called actually the stated rate which is called the APR, annual percentage rate. So 10% annual rate, like 12% annual rate, doesn't matter how many compounding uh, how many compound how many times you compound per year just stated one now however if it is the non-annual problem not only a compounding problem the interest you receive may be different actually so key concept here even though it is stated as 10 percent right now we have 10 percent problem a lot right it's compounding more frequent than annually so if it is annually then you you will your balance will be 110 dollars at the end of the month right but if it is more frequently compounded than annually, then it may be more than that. It's not 110, it's actually more than that. So let's look at that. Consider an example of CD, the certificate of de deposit. 10% compounded now semi-annually. So it's not annual payment, I mean annual compounding, semi-annual compounding, you invest $100, what would your balance be at the end of the fees at the at the end of the year? Then now, in, in in fact, now this is year one, right? However, because it compounded every six months, actually the first period is now six months. Second period another six months. So. Your N should be changed to 2, which is 1 year times number of compound per year, right? So your $100 becomes now, after 1 year, your future value will be, so future value after 6 months, 100 times 1 plus, now the interest rate 10%, however, that 10% is annual interest rate you need to get semi-annual interest rate so it becomes five percent 
So it's going to be 0 0.05 divided by, oh, I'm sorry, 0 0.05. So, yeah, that should, that should not be divided actually. Just the 0 0.05, right? So 0 0.05, then you have $105, right? Now, after one year, so the future value two is actually year one value is 105 times one plus again 0 0.05, right? What is that? It's now 105 times 1.05, which is $110.25, right? So, you compare $110 annual compounding now it's bigger, right? because it gives interest on interest even after 6 months for annual compounding you only get the interest on interest after 1 year now, same annual compounding you receive the interest on interest after 6 months that's why you're gonna have more money so your effective rate is the effective rate is the return you really make is now 110 minus 2.25 minus 100 that's original investment divided by original investment which is 10.25 percent so it's actually more than stated 10 percent stated rate right now let different example now same basic setup from previous one now what about one dollar in one year now 12 percent compound quarterly again there are two changes one number of period right so now instead of one year year one is here but this is fourth quarter right so quarterly compounding ah, sorry to me right so this is one quarter, second second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, quarter, one year, right? Your one dollar or so, give it interest here, 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 and finally here. So your n equals to four. Now the interest is now 12% divided by four quarterly rate, which is 3%, right? So your future value equals to now one dollar present value times one plus your interest rate now quarterly rate and number of quarters is fourth right so it's going to be one point one two five five okay around that okay. So effective rate, the, in, the return you really receive is now 1.1255 minus 1 divided by 1, which is 12.55%. It's actually greater than stated rate. The reason is you receive, now this case you receive the interest on interest after a quarter. Okay, so it's actually more than higher than the state like the state rate so there is a vocabulary here using the previous example like 12 percent stated rate nominal rate also called the 12 percent per annum pa is also called apr annual percentage rate every interest rate you see is the apr actually this is the legally, you know, legal rate you have to announce. Now, 3% is quarterly rate, is also the periodic rate, periodic rate. Quarterly is the compounding frequency, and 12 point actually 5% for us, right? It's probably a rounding error. It's called effective annual rate, which is called EAR, EAR. Okay, it's called the EAR. So there are certain relation between the EAR and APR. Now the interest rate expressed as it were compounded once per year. So EAR basically is the interest rate you really receive. Therefore, even though your compound frequency different, you actually convert this a like each APR to EAR and 
you can compare. So used to compare two alternative investment with different compounding frequency, compounding period. For APR, it's also called the nominal rate, stated rate. This is the annual rate quoted by law, and APR is simply the periodic rate, the so quarterly rate if it is number of period per year. So for quarter is four, annual is two. Periodic rate is APR divided by periods per year. So things remember, you always, always need to make sure the interest rate and time period match to compare. So you can compare two annual rate, you can compare two semi-annual rate, you can compare two quarterly rate, but you cannot compare like a rate, like annual rate versus quarterly directly or annual rate versus semi-annual. Period and time, like interest rate should match. If you have APR based on monthly compounding, you have to use monthly rate and adjust interest rate accordingly. And this is the formula for to get an EAR. So to get an EAR, is EAR equals one plus your APR divided by M, which is number of compounding frequency, number of compound per year. So this is actually periodic rate. Part of the M minus one. So let's look at the example for decision. You know. Which savings account should you choose? So there are two rates, 5.25, 5.3. So, I mean, we want to save at a higher rate, right? If risk is similar. Now, if you don't see, like just up to this part, probably this is higher. The problem here is that the compounding frequencies are different. Now, 5.51 is the daily compounding, 5.31 is semi-annual compounding. So, we cannot directly compare these two numbers. We have to change these two EAR. So, let EAR number one is now 1 plus 5.25%, 0 0.0525 divided by now daily compounding. So, divided by 365, part of 365 minus one. Right? So it's going to be again one point three five divided by three six five. Right, so this is periodic rate for the daily It's going to be 5.39% You can verify that Now the second one is Now M is 2 now, right? So 1 plus 5.3% divided by 2 Now square minus 1 So it's going to be Five point three seven percent. Now it's actually different, right? So because this one is higher, so here for this one is higher. For savings account, this is better. You have to pick the five point two five percent with daily compounding. So when you compare the different interest rate with different compounding frequency, you have to change it them to the EARs and to compare, right? Now, suppose you can earn 1% per year on $1, I mean per month, I'm sorry, invested today. What is the APR? So this is the monthly rate, right? So monthly rate is easy. This is a monthly rate, 1%. So monthly rate is 1%. So APR is actually APR equals to 1%, which is the monthly rate times number of months per year, which is 12%. Now, what about effective rate? So, EAR is now 1 plus, again, the periodic rate 1%, part of the 12, minus 1, so it's going to be 12.68%. So even though APR is 12, 
you really make 12.68%. This is the APR formula. This is basically the real arrangement of the ER formula. So, you know, just uh, for your information, FYI. Now, this is the problem that you're going to solve buying a house problem. Now, you're ready to buy a house and you have $20,000. For down payment and closing costs. Closing costs estimate 4% of the loan value, salary $36,000, and your bank is willing to allow your monthly mortgage payment to be equal to 20% of your monthly income. So that is the maximum amount you can you, you can borrow. Interest rate 6% per year, compounding 30-year fixed loan. How much money will bank loan you, and how much can you afford for the house? So this problem in fact it's two components one what about maxi max amount of maximum amount of the bank loss right number two highs of a price okay so let's look at this problem okay now for bank loans the first problem your monthly income is now your annual salary is six thousand so 36,000 divided by 12, right? Which is 3,000. So that's your income. Now the bank will loan you up to 20% of your monthly income. So your maximum payment is 3,000 times 28%, which is $840. So that's maximum payment you can have. Now this is 30 year mortgage, so it's first month, second month, 30 years times 12 times, right? 360 payments, and you pay 840 each every year. This is negative, right? Because you pay for it, and you pay, you take, take out this loan amount. So and it's 360, 360. Interest rate now is what? Well, 6% per year, that's the interest rate, that's annual rate, so 6% divided by 12, right? Payment is 840, so negative 840. Present value, uh, actually, future value equal to zero since you paid off everything, right? So, your present value, which is the amount of loan, will be... One hundred forty thousand one hundred four dollars and ninety six cents. That's the maximum amount of the bank loan. The so max loan amount will be one hundred forty thousand one hundred four dollars and ninety six cents. That's the amount of loan. Now, what about the total price? Now, when you buy a house, there are two different type of costs. Yeah, like the really cost of payment. One is the down payment. The other is closing cost. The down payment is goes to equity. So this is like kinds of the secure money, right? So if you buy hundred thousand dollar house and twenty percent down payment, then you pay twenty thousand in cash, like the lump sum, and then you pay, you borrow eighty thousand, the remaining part. However, there is also the called the closing cost, usually for the loans, taxes, things like that, which is the sunk cost, the, the cost you have to pay means that this is the cost so this is this does not go to the this does not go to the equity this does not include in the housing price this is called to buy a house so the closing cost will be estimated by four percent of the loan value so your maximum loan 140 104.96 times four percent which is $5,604.20 will be your closing cost. So that's the cost you pay. Then you have 20,000 cash, right? So you use the, the remaining part here as a down payment. So your down payment will be $14,395.80. So the total price you can offer is now the down payment, right? Fourteen thousand three hundred ninety-five point eight plus your loan actually. 
so it will be 154 thousand dollars 500 so 154 thousand five hundred dollars and 76 cents that's the maximum price you can pay so this is very very interesting and the, the uh, practical example because when you buy a house this is how you really plan you know so if you go to the like a real asset website or the CNN money website uh, there is called like a the calculator automatic calculator called the maximum like how how much can you afford based on your income basically and you basically put the interest rate your income things like that and then you they automatically calculate like a pr proportional down payment actually and then they automatically calculate the, the maximum price you can pay for actually this is the way to do so this is very practical example now this is the last advanced problem we have we're gonna solve this problem in class so we're not gonna do uh, in YouTube uh, video uh, basically we're gonna solve this problem in class when we, when we meet or choose uh, when we meet and also the, in class uh, we are going to see the schedule of the mortgage home mortgage payment using the Excel spreadsheet so if um, so uh, we, c we can learn you know how our mortgage actually uh, is paid and how to plan for our you know uh, financial uh, plan so this is the end of the chapter 5